Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Home Times Radio. Hello, hello, and welcome to Arrows Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meets. My name is Martha. I'm a clinical sexologist based in Singapore, and uh, my company is called Arrows Coaching. That's E-R-O-S coaching.com. I'm available via face-to-face and also Skype, of course. <laughs> and uh, in every episode, uh, I either talk about something that I feel listeners would be interested in, or I have a guest. And today I have a guest, and uh, he is uh, returning for the second time. So Reverend Paul Baggett, Baggett is a sex and intimacy coach, sexual healer, body worker, CMT. We're going to check what's that, and an ordained spiritual minister based in Boston, Massachusetts area. Paul has been working with women and couples for more than 20 years, working primarily in the areas of repressed sexuality and healing from sexual abuse or trauma. Paul works with enhanced and heightened sexual energy to bring about empowerment and transformation. So largely self-taught, Paul has been honing and practicing his craft since he was a teenager, tirelessly studying the signs of female anatomy and physiology. He has been counseling women about their elusive G-spot at the age of 18 and continued from there helping women in all phases of their sexuality and expression, expression of that sexuality. Growing up in a home where his mother was being abused, it was only natural that he would grow up to help women heal from such abuses himself. Dubbed the goddess healer earlier in his career by friends and colleagues, Paul has devoted his life to the healing and empowerment of female sexuality as well as the nurturing of divine feminine energy. And we'll find out more about Paul uh, in our show, and you can find out uh, more about him and his work by going to his website aestheticsensations.com. He also has a new website and it's called sensualreiki.org. And he, uh, in today's show, the title is Raising Sexual Energy with Paul Bag. And throughout history, humans have sought to cultivate their sexual energy for a higher purpose. And we will discuss in today's show how this is being done in the past and some ways it is being done today. We will talk about cultivating sexual energy for the purposes of healing and then we will segue into what Paul is doing uh, nowadays. He is just about to start touring the country teaching and certifying practitioners in sensual Reiki, a new form of Reiki that he developed. It's a modality that begins to tap into our sexual energy to amplify the healing effects of traditional Reiki. Uh, For me, uh, as for myself, I'm actually a Reiki master, and so I understand what Reiki is all about, and we'll find out more in today's show. So let's uh, welcome Paul. That was quite a mouthful. (laughs) Hello, (laughs) hello, and uh, thanks for returning for the second time. Well, thank you for having me. I love being on your show. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so let's begin by talking about um, how sexual energy has been cultivated in the past. Okay. Well, as you know, throughout mythology, throughout history, there's always been gods, goddesses, of love, of sexual longing, of desire, of everything. Um, In fact, one of your favorite gods, the Greek god Eros, god of love Mm. and sexual desire. There were were monuments built to these people. There were, um, not when I say people, but to these deities. There were were structures, there was palaces, there was everything to to adore these gods and goddesses via human sexual energy. There was practices, ceremonies, pujas, 
to cultivate that energy and use it to worship these deities. Sometimes okay. it was for purposes. Sometimes it was for purposes of asking for, you know, fertility of crops, fertility of soil. Other times it was for mm -hmm. fertility of family. But they, they all, the fundamental thing is that they all believed, all these cultures, all these societies throughout history believed that through sexual energy, it was a way to get closer to or worship the gods. Beautiful. Great. So, so you mentioned uh, Greek uh, uh, times. Uh, how, how about uh, Tantra and uh, in India? Sure. Um, India, actually all over Southeast Asia, um, Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, there is some degree of teaching of sexual energy and its cultivation and enhancement to become one with God or source or whatever you would like to call, you know, mm. with your deity in here. But yeah, to cultivate that energy to create that oneness with everything. And that's, so, that goes back thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So they would cultivate their sexual energy through pujas and rituals, you're saying? Yes. Okay. Yes, they'd, they'd, they, would, they would have ceremonies, pujas, rituals to bring that, that focused energy together for whatever mm -hmm. purpose that particular celebration was about. However, it was generally involved sexual energy and the amplification of that to get what they wanted or to worship a god, goddess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's a great summary of uh, how they used to do it. And I suppose they would do it through an uh, intermediary like a priest or priestess. Well, yes, priestesses more than likely back in that time, but there were priests, there were um, specific, specific heads of tribes or, or medicine men, shaman, however you want to, whatever term you want to use, there was somebody mm. generally appointed to be an overseer of that. Mm. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, how about for modern times? Well, in modern times, we go back to Tantra. Tantra, we still have Tantra. And one of the, mm -hmm. the mainstay teachings of Tantra, especially modern Tantra, is that cultivating of that sexual energy to become one with spirit, to become one with God. Mm -hmm. um, we also mm -hmm. still have in modern times sex magic that is done by mm -hmm. pagans and, and, and witchcraft, where a focused mm -hmm. sexual energy is sent out in the universe with a specific intent and a belief that you can you can master this energy and create what you want, manifest what you want through this focused intent. Mm. Great. And um, how is this different from the past? Well, there's a lot of ways it's different. I mean, now we have modern technology, we have science. Back then, there was a lot of things that were so so very, very much unexplained to the people of the times. Mm -hmm. Like, say, for example, a solar eclipse. You know, to the people mm -hmm. of the time, the gods came and took the sunlight away. Why did they do that? We need to appease them. We need to have some type of ceremony to appease them and bring the sun back. I mean, now here in 2016, we know a solar eclipse is a solar eclipse. It has nothing to do with the God. However, we still have our own spiritual practices and our spiritual beliefs that we want to do with our sexual energy um, some type of ritual, some type of... Uh, I can't think of the word I'm actually looking for, but some type of celebration of that energy to achieve what is not as uh, primal of an objective mm -hmm. as we had then, but now it's mm -hmm. usually more 
more self-developing. Mm. So, uh, can you explain a little bit what uh, self-developing means to you? Well, okay, uh, in modern day spirituality, a lot of it is going within. A lot of it is seeking change inside yourself and to develop yourself. Mm. Um, mm. We can do that through our sexual energy, especially with the, if you want to go back to the ancient teachings of Tantra that talk about developing yourself through this energy, those practices are still being used today. It's it, mm. Through our own sexual energy, we find out mm. so much about mm. ourselves. We find yeah. out... So we have a... What, yeah. So we have a break now and we'll continue after this break. This is uh, really fascinating. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. It's 6.42 p.m. Time for Steve Plato and his son Dylan to do the dishes. They talk about everything from the yuckiness of girls to the awesomeness of his soccer team. Sometimes they don't talk at all. Then, hey! the dreaded <laughs> splash fight. It's dad o'clock, and it's the best time of the day. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Welcome to Arrow's Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meet. In today's show, we're talking about raising your sexual energy with Paul, with Paul Beck. And you can find him at Ecstatic Sensations. That e, that's E-C-S-T-A-T-I-C sensations.com. And his email is tantraviking at yahoo.com. Just before break, we were talking about how humans have been cultivating their sexual energy for a higher purpose in the past. And this included pujas, rituals, and ceremonies involving priestesses and priests, heads of tribe, medicine men, shamans, whatever you want to call it. And um, they would essentially be using sexual energy for the purpose of getting closer to God, to be one with God. And in modern day, I'm just summarizing what Paul said. And in modern days, we are still using Tantra, we're using sex magic, and we are using focused sexual energy for the purpose of mastering ourselves. And the tendency nowadays is that we are more self-developing. By that, he means that we are going within to seek and uh, cultivate our spirituality. So, uh, Paul, am I summarizing everything okay? <laughs> Everything's great. <laughs> okay, so is there anything you'd like to add to um, what I've just summarized? Well, our, our sexual energy is the strongest force that we as humans carry inside our body. And it's also the mm -hmm. strongest force we have for transformation and for change. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's the same energy as the creation of the planets, the creation of the universe. It's the same energy as Mother Nature and all its creation. It's that same energy that is inside of us. Now, we can either let that sit dormant, ignore it, 
or we can use it and cultivate it and nurture it to bring it to its fullest potential, which generally is some type of self-transformation or some type of self-empowerment. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. So how, how do we so. do that? How do we do that? Well, uh, there are thousands of different ways to go about doing that. Um, mm -hmm. You could take the, te the teachings of the ancient tantrics and you could follow that. Um, there's a there's hundred different variations of that, and that has evolved over the years to a bunch of different types of tantra, a, a bunch of different ways of celebrating self and your sexual energy. Um, you could follow the ways of the ancient Aztecs and Mayans, which are tougher, tougher to find through, through history and, and teachings, but a lot of it is the same. It's that same energy. Um, there's a man called Drunvalo, Drunvalo Malkitadek that speaks of something called anking, where you raise the sexual energy up through your body, up to your your crown chakra and then bring it back down again and this revitalizes you via your own sexual energy mm. there's, oh, there's very teachings out there there's teachings mm -hmm. out there and we do have the beautiful thing now known as the internet where you can search for these and find almost anything you want mm -hmm. but for somebody who Great. truly wants to do this type of self development the information is out there Mm. Yes. So when I talk about um, raising sexual energy, my friends would immediately start talking about Kundalini Yoga. What's your opinion about that as a way of raising sexual energy? That's actually an, another perfect example of a way to, to to go after that energy. Kundalini Yoga works with well, Kundalini is said to be this big ball of energy. Um, that resides at the base of your spine and it coils up your spine as it rises, invigorating, revitalizing, healing. Um, it's also it's known as the serpent. And in many, many cultures, the serpent is referenced as that energy that raises up your spine. Also, the, um, the medical symbol. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head right now but it's the staff with the two wings and there's two serpents that that climb up mm. that staff that is said to be mm. the kundalini serpent. So kundalini yoga yeah. is a perfect way to work on that energy. Mm, beautiful. And um, I'm very curious, what is your the way that you teach? The way that I teach? Mm. Um, What's your method well, of raising sexual energy that you teach? Well, I, I have a couple of different disciplines that I use. I, I use aspects of Tantra. I use some, I use some Earth-based aspects of Native American teachings and the energy of Mother Earth and nature. I also use a lot of um, Reiki types of energy to um, build through the chakras and fill the whole body energetically that way. I created my own modality, which you, you briefly touched on in the intro, called Sensual Reiki. And what Sensual Reiki is, is a combination of massage, Reiki, and Tantra. The Tantric aspects of, of healing and empowering through sexual energy, um, plus the more commonly known Reiki energy, and massage, which relaxes you, revitalizes you, invigorates you, and it also detoxes you and gets your circulation going. I've combined all three of these things to create another form of healing that mm -hmm. works with sexual energy, and basically it's sexual energy that I like to say turbocharges or kickstarts the rest of the energy work that's going to happen. Mm. How does it do that? Well, okay. Reiki 
it, Reiki is basically two words smushed together. R E I mm -hmm. means life force, key. and key yeah. means energy. Okay, key is yeah. the Japanese form of energy. K I. Yeah. Okay. So we have that bioenergy work that we're we're using to begin with. Now, again, like I said before, sexual energy is the most powerful force that we carry inside our body. So to be able to tap into that and use that to enhance the other form of energy work, the Reiki that's going on, just makes it that much more potent and reaches on a much mm -hmm. deeper level than the regular Reiki would. It reaches at a more primal level at our core and the essence of who we are as humans, as, as creatures of creation. Mm -hmm. the, the, it's a sensual massage, so everything is slowed down and softened. Um, the sensual massage and massaging of various erogenous zones, there, there's no direct genital stimulation. However, there is stimulation around the genitals. So just in that, by stroking these erogenous zones, by starting to tickle at these energies, that's enough to amplify and turbocharge the Reiki. And it mm. has tremendous results. Mm. So I, I would imagine working. some people, sorry, go on. <laughs> no, it, go ahead, I'll get back to that. Oh yeah, I was gonna say that I would assume that some people would start getting turned on and what you're saying is um, um, the, the technique is just massaging around the genitals but not directly. So the practitioner would refuse to do genital stimulation. Yes. The, um, okay. the person who's on the table, the receiver, is either nude or minimally draped, meaning the genital areas are covered. Now, the idea mm -hmm. is to create some stimulation. There is some little degree of being turned on that you're shooting for. However, it's, it's not being done with the focus of trying to raise that energy for orgasm or anything like that. You're just wanting to tap mm -hmm. into it just enough to exhilarate, mm -hmm. to create that deeper mm -hmm. feeling of relaxation, relaxation mm -hmm. where you can let go more, and mm -hmm. to use that little bit of an of a kickstart to get the rest of the energy moving. Mm -hmm. You're also tapping into this, this very, very potent energy that lies within us, and it has incredible healing effects as well as rejuvenating and revitalizing. Mm. So once, once you've activated that energy and amplified it, as a kickstart, how is it being used uh, for healing then? Well, it, it's raised up, in, in any traditional Reiki, there are um, basic hand positions on the energy that you work on. We, we utilize those hand positions plus the seven main chakras in the work. Mm. Mm. So we focus on those energies, those energy centers in the body. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the client, whatever it was that they're, they're coming to you for, if they're just coming for deep relaxation, they want the most, the most relaxating type of massage they can get, that's easy to do with this. If the client is coming to you because they've got some other work that they want to be done on a deeper level, this is a great way to start tapping into that, and you can get into it more than you could with traditional rates. Mm. Great. And um, uh, go, go ahead. sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was, I was just going to say those those energies being being awakened while you're on the table and receiving also have the effect of being very empowering. That you are getting something that you deserve while you're on the table, or that you're you're meant to feel this good. Mm. So that in itself becomes very empowering. Yes. I think uh, for a lot of us, we are so used to feeling 
okay and um, or bad and we don't really understand what feeling good or great or feeling the way we, uh, we deserve to feel feels like. I know I felt yep. that uh, for a long time <laughs> because I, I, I'm a sensitive to gluten my whole life and I didn't know what great felt like until I got off gluten. Right. And sometimes it's just a question of pushing yourself just that little bit further to find those mm. answers or, or to find what you didn't know was there and then it all comes mm. together. Mm. Beautiful. So we're with Paul and we're going to discuss more about how to raise your sexual energy after this break. your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Alicia Isaacs Howes. And I'm Catherine Glass. And we're the Psychic Angel Channelers. You can find us every week here on Ohm Times Radio at Angel Talk Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. There is no death, only a change of worlds. Chief Seattle. Deborah Livingston is an award-winning intuitive psychic medium whose international services include mediumship, spiritual assessment, animal communication, and spiritual mentoring. She is a published author and a trained shaman. Deborah provides evidential messages from spirit and departed loved ones. Learn more at devlivemedium.com. That's D-E-B-L-I-V medium.com. I want to thank my mommy for loving me so much. For taking taking me to the doctor when I broke my foot. For leaving me alone when I wanted to be alone. And And now, now, as a grown-up, I'm thankful for being able to take care of you, my dear mom. For taking you to your therapies. For understanding that sometimes you simply want to be alone. Roles change without us noticing. That's why AARP gives you the information to provide even better care for your loved one. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Welcome to Eros Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meet. You are listening to our show on the Own Times Radio Network, and you can share this show with your friends by going to this link, ontimes.com forward slash mobile. With this link, your friends will be able to listen to this show without needing to download any app. We are with uh, Paul Bag, who uh, Reverend Paul Bag, and he's an ordained spiritual minister based in. Boston, Massachusetts area. He invites women to go within their holistic body and empower their true feminine sensual selves. He provides a safe, nurturing and sacred space for the exploration of their natural sexuality to heal and awaken their lives. And if you'd like to find out more about Paul and his work or book a counseling session online, you can visit him at aestheticsensations.com. And it is also the same for his Facebook page, Aesthetic Sensations. And his email is tantraviking at yahoo.com. He has a new website and it's called sensualreiki.org. So tell us more about your new website, Paul. Okay, well, sensualreiki.org is a website I put together to support this touring of the country that I'm going to do, teaching my modality of sensual Reiki. Uh, on there, I have an overview of what it's all about, what the training schedule is like, um, who it's open to. Uh, I'm actually 
it's a certification course. However, I'm only certifying people who are Reiki II or above. Others are welcome to take take the course and still get all the same information. However, they just won't have any certification as a master practitioner in Central Reiki. Um, also on the website, there's a calendar of where I'm going to be. I've got seven cities that I'm looking at right now. However, none of them have been nailed down just yet as far as a venue or the actual date. But I'm looking to be on the West Coast in Berkeley, California, um, Salem or Portland, Oregon, not sure exactly which one yet, Seattle, Washington. Then I'm also looking at being in Chicago and here on the East Coast, I'm going to be actually here in New England where I am. I'm going to be in Vermont and Providence and then a little further south down in New Jersey, and I'm looking towards uh, North Carolina and Florida as well. And that will be on the site as soon as those dates are nailed down. That will be up there so everybody can see where the trainings are at and to purchase the program and course and be trained if they like. I'll also be doing private sessions in each one of these cities to help promote it and to get people people more more informed about what it is that I do and what sensual Reiki can do for them. Awesome. That's really great that uh, you have uh, all these offerings and travel dates are coming up. Um, I'm, I'm uh, wondering, um, you know, you, you're combining all these uh, things that you've learned and, uh, you know, uh, massage, Reiki, Tantra. Um, how, 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 uh, how did you uh, 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 do this, like come up with all these things, put it together, uh, what was the process behind it, and the importance uh, in this uh, new uh, uh, practice that you are offering now? Sure. Well, as you know, I've been a sex and intimacy coach for 20 plus years. Um, about 10 years ago, I went to massage school, became a massage therapist, and I actually had a spiritual awakening at that point, too, and that started me in the direction of learning about energy. Well, so combining the energy work, my knowledge of sexuality, and then the body work is kind of where it started there. It was after that that I started developing what I thought would work through research and practice and research and practice, and I discovered what was working for me and my clients. I actually put this whole thing together about five years ago um, as sensual Reiki, and I put together a 44-page manual, and I was going to teach it then. However, something was still kind of missing. It really didn't feel right. So that never happened, but it really wasn't until recently that um, my beloved, my lover, friend, partner, everything, I taught her how to do this type of work, and while she was working on me, and she has an incredible relationship with spirit, creator, whatever you want to call God, goddess, and she actually channeled the symbol that we use in sensual Reiki. And it's more of, the symbol is more of a direction of the way we, we flow the energy through the body. And since we've added that, that kind of brought it all together. And it brought it to a point where I knew that it was now ready to start teaching to people as something duplicatable that they can learn, they can do, and bring it out and start and start practicing it them, themselves. So the five years ago, I started putting it together, and finally, here we are five years later. It's now been perfected, and it's at a point where... It's duplicatable. I can bring it out there and make sure that people are trained in the way that I know it works so that they can go out and do the same thing again and everybody can benefit from sensual Reiki. Mm, beautiful. I'm so happy to hear this. So I have a, I have a question uh, about this. Uh, why is it important to raise sexual energy? Well, okay. In our society today, there's all kinds of stigmas still around our sexual energy. We're, I mean, it, depending upon what age you are, I mean, unless you're maybe 20 years 
And actually, I can't say that either, because even modern society today, we have our stigmas around sexuality, sexual energy, expression of that energy. But anybody who's like middle-aged or older, we've been told since an early, early age that sex is something that's that's dirty, that it's got you be ashamed of, or it's it, it procreation is its own purpose, its only purpose, and society and culture have dictated that too. And and a lot of people that has somehow stuck inside them as as some type of um, blockage around freely expressing who they are. So it is important to recognize that within yourself, who you actually are, what actually pleases you, what does it mean to freely express your sexual energy, which all right, your sexual energy comes from your, your sacral chakra, which is also your creative center. So when that mm-hmm. energy is stuck or if that energy is dormant or, or not addressed or something, then the potential of your sacral chakra isn't being realized. The potential of your creativity isn't being realized. And that, that energy, in essence, is your essence, I should say, because that is your potential mm. as to who you are. So mm. to work with this energy, you're, you're really working with the truth of who that person is on the table. When you start mm. tapping into these energies, you're working with that individual at that very base primal thing of who that person is as a human being. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's important to unblock that energy? Well, it can do so much for us to to Mm -hmm. cultivate that and nurture it. We can, it can, if there is a problem, it shows up in the rest of our lives. It shows up in our relationships. It shows up in what we are creating mm-hmm. for ourselves and in the, mm-hmm. the aspect of um, the law of attraction. You know, what we put out there is what we get back. So mm-hmm. to cultivate and nurture this energy, it's empowering. We, we change ourselves and we change what we bring into our lives. We change the way mm-hmm. we are perceived in the world, and we change the way we feel about the world, too, because if we're happier then we're going to be, we're going to look at things in new ways. Because life is beautiful. Things are great. We're not always going to be down about everything. And that, again, you know, changes the law of attraction, changes what you bring into your life. If you're confident, empowered, happy, you know, you're going to bring good things into your life. You're going to bring what you want in there. Same thing with relationships. If you have a a poor self-esteem, then, you know, for what, whatever's causing that self-esteem, then you're going to attract people into your life that aren't going to be treating you the way you should be treated. Mm-hmm. And that all of that can be changed by a, a sexual energy. Mm. Beautiful. So I understand now the importance of connecting with our sacral energy uh, and, uh, you know, it's a big part of who we are, the truth of and our essence, and also being able to realize our potential. I I get all that. I'm just playing devil's advocate uh, and asking now um, the importance of raising that energy. Raising it. Well, mm, generally, unless we, <laughs> well, unless we're doing some type of work on it, it kind of sits there, and mm. it okay. just kind so of sits there and lies. And be stuck. Yeah, it it lies dormant. So we need to tap into it to nurture it and cultivate it and raise it to get these desired effects. Got so, it. Yeah create that better sense of well-being or that better sense of vitality to be more free-flowing in our bioenergy, to be more Mm -hmm. free-flowing into the energy we're putting out into the universe and what we're getting back. And also Mm -hmm. it has incredible healing powers as far as clearing our energy field Mm -hmm. to get rid of the stagnant energy and bring in new and thriving and vibrant energy 
to help heal, to help regenerate and transform. Mm. 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 Beautiful. Thank you so much for explaining it uh, this way. I have not heard it being explained so clearly. I'm getting a lot out of today's show already, and I can't imagine what we're going to say in the next 15 minutes (laughs) after this break. (laughs) But we'll think of something, I'm sure. (laughs) Oh, yeah. This is really awesome. You, You are so good. Uh, so, yeah, let's have a break and uh, I think of more questions. All right. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Home Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Come heal yourself. What is healing? Healing is nothing but connecting with your all-knowing higher self that already has solutions to all your problems and is always there to guide you. Through this show, we help you to connect with that you are and tap into that innate potential you have to transform your life and fly high. Please join me, your host Monica Goyal, every Sunday, 7 p.m. Pacific. Namaste. Hi, this is Christina Ricci with Rain. Every two minutes, another American is sexually assaulted. If you or someone you know has been sexually assaulted, you are not alone. Help is just a call or click away through the National Sexual Assault Hotline. Please call 1-800-656-HOPE, that's H-O-P-E, or visit RAIN.org, that's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by RAIN and this station. And this is the last segment of today's show. We're talking about rising sexual energy with Paul Beck. And you can find him at aestheticsensations.com. And he has another website called sensualreiki.org. And his email address is tantraviking at yahoo.com. Reverend Paul Beck is a sex and intimacy coach, sexual healer, body worker, and an audience spiritual minister based in Boston, Massachusetts. He is going to start touring the country, teaching and certifying practitioners in sensual Reiki, a new form of Reiki that he developed. So, uh, Paul, just uh, let me know, uh, you wrote on your profile CMT. What does that stand for? Certified Massage Therapist? Uh, Nationally Certified Massage Therapist. I don't hold a license Uh. in any state. I'm just naturally okay. certified. Awesome. Okay, so that clears up what CMT stands for for me. <laughs> so <laughs> we've been talking about uh, what uh, your uh, new modality, Central Reiki, is about. We have talked about the importance of connecting with our sacral energy and rising our sexual energy. And um, so I want to find out a little bit more about this training that you're doing. Do you really, do you actually need to be a Reiki practitioner in order to sign up for Central Reiki? Absolutely not. No, this this is open to anybody who wants to take the training. I, I expect that there's going to be um, couples who want to learn how because I'm also teaching sensual massage in, as part of this course. So I'm expecting there's going to be couples who are going to want to learn to do it so they can practice amongst themselves and deeper their intimacy. I believe this will also appeal to massage therapists 
who want to take their practice a little bit further, um, and really any type of energy workers or energy healers who want to learn a new modality. Um, it's only, mm. however, people who already have a certification of Reiki 2 or above that I will be giving the attunement to and certifying them as master practitioners because they already have a very strong background in energy and I want to take them and certify them so they can go out and do it, but anybody can take the course. Mm. Um, the course itself the course itself is going to be a day and a half long intensive. Um, what I plan mm. on doing is Friday Friday night, maybe from 6 to 9 or 7 to 10, I'm, I have six classes that I'm going to be teaching. Um, ethics and boundaries, the systems of the body, muscles and flesh, sensual massage, the seven chakra system and the meridian system, and also talking and teaching about sensual sexual energy. The ethics and boundaries are very important because, you know, the people who are going to be getting on the table, like I said, they're either going to be nude or minimally draped. So a lot of times it's going to be, it took somebody a whole lot of courage to get up on that table. And they're in an incredibly vulnerable, vulnerable position right now. So I want to make sure every, everybody's ethics and boundaries are where they should be in order to practice this type of modality. Now, if, if this is something that's going to appeal to a massage therapist, he's, he she has already had ethics and boundaries when they went to school. So they should be used to this type of thing. But for others, you know, who say maybe somebody is a Reiki practitioner, has never been taught ethics and boundaries, never really had people who are nude and that vulnerable on their table, I want to make sure they know how to deal with this. Um, systems of the body, just like in massage school, again, you need to learn what's underneath what you're working with. Um, as far as like massaging the abdominal area, well, your, your abdominal muscles are actually attached to your stomach and they need to be moved in a certain way or you could cause somebody to be constipated. So I want to make sure that's all addressed and taken care of. Um, muscles and flesh. Well, I'm not training anybody to be a massage therapist. I don't have that kind of power, and I wouldn't want to do it anyway. But I do want the people I'm training to know what's under the skin, what it is they're actually moving around. So I'm going to teach them about muscles, and then I'm going to teach them about flesh. I'm going to teach them what where the most sensitive areas are, where the somewhat less sensitive areas are, how to move the flesh. I'm going to teach them sensual massage, so they're going to be learning about different erogenous zones and different areas that are cause pleasure that they may not have even thought of before because maybe, you know, their partner wasn't sensitive there, but somebody else could be. So I'm going to be teaching that. And then, of course, I'm going to teach energy, the seven chakra system, and the meridians based on Chinese medicine, the flow of our energy and how that's manipulated. Same way acupuncturists manipulate it with needles, we can manipulate that through our own energy work. And then of course, sensual, sexual energy, what this energy is, the power that it holds, and how we can use it for empowerment, transformation, and healing. So I'm going to teach that on the first night in like three hours. They're, they they are going to receive a manual, so it will all be covered in the manual. This will just be an overview and make sure everybody's got a firm grasp of it. And then the next day will be nine hours of hands-on workshop where everybody works on each other. So I, and I have it right in all the information that I have on the websites and everything that anybody who's taking this course can expect to both give and receive. They're going to be on the table learning what this modality feels like to receive, as well as learning what it is like to be the practitioner and be able to give this type of energy work to their clients. So it's a day and a half long intensive. That's great. It sounds really, really awesome. So for listeners out there, if you're interested, please uh, contact uh, Paul directly, and uh, he has two websites, aestheticsensations.com and also sensualreiki.org. Yeah. 
Okay, so this one uh, uh, is for the men. So I want to ask what uh, advice you have uh, for men when it comes to raising sexual energy. Say they're completely new to these things. What is the easiest way for them to get started? Yeah, I actually I meant to mention that when we were talking about that earlier. Generally, I work with women, so it's what I say is usually geared towards women. But I know men have to understand. <laughs> men have to understand that they hold all the same thing within them as well, and they can utilize their sexual energy for more confidence to, you know, to have an edge in the business world, to have better relationships with people, and again to tap into that creativity that lies within them for whatever it is they want to do with it. Then it's a little tougher to tap into our sexuality because, you know, since day one, when we're born, we're told what we're supposed to be, quote, unquote, as men. You're supposed to be tough. You're supposed to be strong. You're supposed to, not supposed to show emotion. You're not supposed to feel mm. certain things. Well, that's mm. not true because as a human, you're built to feel certain things. Some of them happen to be more softer emotions. When you can actually get past the ego, when you can actually get past that male pride and just let the energy build within you and flow, you start to feel things you didn't realize were even possible for a man. Like, a man is perfectly capable of having almost all the same types of orgasms that women are. They're capable of extended orgasms, multiple orgasms, energy orgasms, all these beautiful things that we're not taught we can do. We're taught, you know, you ejaculate, that's it, you're done. But it's not true. We're just energetic be beings the same as women, and we are capable of all types of different pleasure the same as women. So that type of knowledge for a man to be able to tap into and understand about himself is incredibly powerful for self-knowledge, for self-development, for that type of transformation that we've been talking about, to, to take, your, take your game to the next level, we'll say, or to take your life to the next level. Mm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, I have, so, do have an... Okay, go ahead. You yeah, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, you go ahead. Go ahead. We're just about to uh, end very soon. So is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, yeah, I do have an exercise, actually. I'm going to put it up on the website. Anybody who signs up for my newsletter, I'm going to give them a little video of this exercise and how they can do it. But to get the idea of what sexual energy is, how powerful it can be, what it feels like, is I have a simple little practice. And it's been it's been called a bunch of different things. I like I have a friend in New Jersey, the Reverend Goddess Charmaine. She calls it Stop Start to the Heart. I like that, so I use it. What it is is masturbation. You masturbate almost mm -hmm. to the point of climax, but before you get to climax, you stop. Take that energy, that big ball of energy that you just created down in your pelvis, and raise it up through your body. You can raise it up via breath. You can raise it up via Putting your hand on your on your pelvis and visualize raising the energy up through your body, but bring that that energy that you have just built, bring it up to your heart. Physically raise it up to your heart and let it sit there and just feel what is going on inside you. Feel all your cells open up. Feel the vibrancy that's now within you that you just created. That energy you just created, and then let it dissipate. And then do it again. Bring yourself almost to the point of climax. Raise it up again to your heart and let it dissipate. I, I usually give this the homework for a lot of my clients, and now I'm just going to give it away free with the signing up for the newsletter. But doing this two or three times, and then by all means, let, your help, let yourself have a climax, an orgasm. You know, you, you built up that energy. You earned it. You deserve it. But... By pulling this up to your body and letting it sit there in your chest, you get, you begin to feel the power of this type of energy that is sitting inside you. And then you can start to imagine all the wonderful things that you can do with it. That's the easiest way I know of to be able to tell people or to show them, you know, this is your energy, it's inside you, and this is a beginning of the power it has. 
Great. And thank you very much, Paul, for your gift. And remember to tune in next week to Arrow's Evolution. We'll have um, Mitchell Tapper, and we're going to be talking about love after war. So tune in to Arrow's Evolution next week. Have a great week ahead.